The more, the merrier. Second Samuel, chapter 20, verse 3. Then David came to his house in Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, the concubines, whom he had left to keep the house and placed them under guard. Why does David have concubines? A concubine is a woman who cohabitates with a man without being legally married, usually a slave woman in ancient societies who did not possess the rights of the free wife. David not only had many concubines, he also had many wives. Read 2 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 5 and 2 Samuel 5 verses 13 to 16. This was the case with many of the ancients in the biblical record, including Abraham in Genesis 16.3, Nahor chapter 22 verse 24, Jacob chapter 30 verse 4, Eliphaz chapter 36 verse 12, and Gideon judges 8 verses 30 to 31, and Solomon who had hundreds of wives and concubines, as in 1 Kings 11 verses 1 to 8. Human nature is much more corrupt than we care to admit, especially as it relates to our passions where we are extremely vulnerable and weak. In the area of marriage and sexual relations, these biblical characters too often reflect the culture of their time in the same way that many Christians today reflect their culture's sexual and marital mores. Christian participation in premarital sex and its growing tolerance of homosexuality is all too prevalent. The biblical characters of old violated God's standards, as many do today. Some suggest that the Bible's lack of prohibition on polygamy and concubinage amounts to an unspoken acceptance of these behaviors. The Bible also fails to issue prohibitions on suicide and slavery, but they too are inappropriate. The point is that the lack of a legal prohibition is not the same as approval. In fact, the guiding principle for male and female relations makes prohibitions unnecessary. One man for one woman, as in Genesis 2, verses 23 to 25. Furthermore, the prophet Malachi chides the people for being unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Read Malachi 2, verses 14 and 16. Note that he does not say the wives, plural, of your youth. The idea that a person can divorce his wife to marry another violates a mutual agreement. Read Malachi 2.14. Is offensive to the Holy Spirit? Chapter 2, verse 15. Wearisome to the Lord? Chapter 2, verse 17. And ignores credible evidence against the acceptability of concubinage and polygamy. The vague reference to Abraham? Chapter 2, verse 15 most likely refers to Abraham having sexual relations with Hagar in Genesis 16, verses 1 to 6, which is viewed in a negative light. See also Proverbs 31, 3, and verses 10 to 31. Finally, Jesus himself describes the original intent of marriage as an inseparable union between one man and one woman. Read Matthew 19, verses 4 to 6 and 8 and 9, as well as Mark 10, verses 5 to 9. See also Romans 7, 2, 1 Timothy 3, verses 2 and 12, and Hebrews 13, 4. The situation in 2 Samuel 23 is further evidence that multiple partners create problems. David's son Absalom had begun a futile rebellion to overthrow his father. 
upon the advice of an advisor in 2 Samuel 16, verses 20 to 22, Absalom had sexual relations with David's concubines to convince the people that he had possession of all that belonged to David, thus successfully usurping the throne. See also 1 Kings 2, verses 12 through 25. Upon returning to Jerusalem after repulsing the rebellion, David immediately had the ten concubines quarantined for the duration of their lives. They had become Absalom's possessions and therefore could no longer be sexual partners for the king. Though David provided for them, his failure to adopt God's view of marriage unnecessarily and negatively affected many lives. Such is also the case with Abraham, who fathered Ishmael, and Solomon, who loved the gods of his lovers and divided a kingdom. 1 Kings 11 verses 9 to 13.